This episode of the Good Living Now podcast is sponsored by Joy. Now, if you're someone who suffers with erectile dysfunction like I did after going through prostate cancer, get you some Joy Mode. Now, what I love most about Joy Mode is that it's all natural without the side effects found in some prescription medications. Plus, Joy Mode helps with heart health and blood pressure, so it's all good. Now, for more information, visit usejoymode.com. All right, go ahead, get your Joy Mode. Welcome to the Good Living Now podcast, where we talk to real people about real change leading to real health. I'm your host, Harold LaFall, and today we're going to meet an incredible gentleman. He has completely transformed his health and is helping thousands of others do the same with something called the mucusless diet. Welcome to the show, Professor Spira. Hey, Professor. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Good, good, man. So you've completely transformed your life, your health, and you're helping thousands of others do the same through something called the mucusless diet. What is that? All right. So the mucusless diet healing system was written by Professor Arnold Errett in the early 1900s. And it is essentially a transitional system that incorporates the change of diet away from pus and mucus forming foods, which are disease causing foods to mucus free foods or mucus less foods that do not cause disease. Then there's training on how to properly fast, do short term fasting and as well as other ancillary therapies from your breath work and your sunbathing and mm. internal cleansing and things like that. And it puts it all together into a nice system. And uh, one of the things that differentiates us from others is the transition diet methodology where we're not trying to tell anybody to do things overnight or mm -hmm. to do some kind of really long fast or to be 100% anything right off the bat. It's all about right. gradually transforming your physiology to make it so that you can change, make the changes effortlessly. Right, right. Now, you know, a lot of times when we think about mucus or hear about mucus, we think about when folks have allergies or colds, but this is something else, right? Yeah, yeah. So we don't, we don't realize how much obstruction is created in the body from mucus forming foods. And unfortunately, a lot of these foods are just everyday foods, things that people think that are healthy, that you just eat all the time. But over time, this stuff starts to turn into this sludge inside the body, down in the colon and intestines and the, the residue of this slime. Because uh, it's, it's really, honestly, not to gross anybody out, it's not... Mm. It's not totally natural to have to wipe all the time, you know, every time you mm. go to the bathroom. But what that represents is that's just a, that's the residue that the sticky residue left over from sticky foods, from mucus forming foods. When you do go periods of time where you're on foods that are less mucus forming, that are less sticky and less slimy, that's one of the things you'll notice is oh, I don't have to wipe that much or I don't or at all because mm. things are eliminating cleanly. So, mm. uh, so that's something to think about. It's like right, a right. world observation that you can have. Right, right. And look, and I mentioned that you completely transformed your health using the mucus diet. So what was going on with you before, you know, you made your transition? Yeah, I was over uh, at the time when I started this, I was over 300 pounds. I had migraine headaches every day to the point where when I was in high school, the nurse's office had Tylenol and Advil. And almost every day I would get a pass to go to the nurse's office. I'd go mm. take an Advil, lay down for 15 minutes and go back to class. I have really bad constipation, really bad uh, this hemorrhoids all the time. Uh, mm. And it was pretty much blowing my nose constantly, having cold and flu-like symptoms, frequent fevers. Uh, they had me on allergy medication since I was seven years old, said I'd be on it the rest of my life. Then when I was 18, uh, they gave me a CPAP unit and told me that I had sleep apnea and that I could die if I didn't use my CPAP unit. Wow. At night. Uh, and before all that, when I was 10 years old, 
I, my grandma who was raising me, she passed away just unexpectedly. I didn't know that that was going to happen. And a mm. week after that, my mother, who was always in and out of the hospital as I was growing up, she went into the hospital with a, uh, with a massive heart attack, had a triple bypass surgery. Ultimately, a few months after that, they amputated both of her legs from the knees wow. down. And uh, then she ultimately passed away about a year later. So when I was in these environments, that these nursing homes and hospitals, I felt like something was wrong, that this is not normal. It's not normal for people's elders to be in this environment and for young people or any people of any age that this they, this has been normalized too much. And I was young. I didn't have the words to really express all this, but just being in this environment at such a young age, I was like, okay, this something's wrong here. So later on, I've, I've got on this journey to become a professional musician and went to the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. And when I was there, I met a jazz drummer by the name of Willie Smart, aka Brother Air. And he's the one that told me about the Mucus's Diet Healing System. Mm. And so I read it and totally blew me away. And within six months, I'd lost 100 pounds. I got off wow. all those pharmaceutical medications. I got off the CPAP unit. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Mm -hmm. I'll put this in the middle. So these are these are a year apart. This is exactly wow. a year apart. This was my resident advisor thing, you know, like card. Mm -hmm. And so, so that was, yeah, where I totally fundamentally transformed who I was. So you lost 100 pounds in six months? Yeah. Wow. So, like, what were you eating before, and then what did you start eating on a mucusless diet? Yeah, so before I was not eating very well at all. <laughs> I mean, it was like the the standard, I call it the standard anywhere diet, but the standard American <laughs> diet. I, I had a tendency for glutton, uh, glut. a normal person would have one or two burgers, I would have three or four. First, just to give an example of the kind of gluttony I was doing. There, we had this place called the Root Beer Stand, and they had chili cheese dogs, foot logs. Mm. So, so I would go there and get two foot logs with chili cheese, a cheeseburger, a root beer float, and a, a popcorn, all for one meal. And I did that a couple wow. times a week. And uh, so it was, it was. I mean, I, I honestly don't think I would be here if I hadn't found this mm. information. I right. would have definitely been one of those statistics of somebody that doesn't make it that's that yeah. you know in their thirties or forties and uh and even some of my favorite musicians they they did not treat their bodies very well and they died when they were in their thirties or early forties. Mm. You know, John, John Coltrane was 40 and mm. you know, Charlie Parker and you know some of these guys. But before when I found it, I was on a conscious journey to try and find the cure for human illness and the foundation mm. of human suffering. So it was a spiritual journey that I was on. And I had studied a lot of philosophers and all, all these different the sciences. And I just kind of had studied all these different things and religions and all kinds of stuff. And I never found answers that really uh, satisfied me. And then once I read the mucus's diet healing system, that's when it was like, a light went on. I was like, this was what I was looking for. This answers the questions that I had about why humans suffer so much, why mm. we have created the, the societies that we have, the, the negative parts of the societies, the kinds that, that where, where there's a, a, a big ignorance when it comes to what we're supposed to put into our body. And that translates into poor behavior where it was something that I was looking, looking for. Looking for. Right. So what did you start eating? So you went from like eating chili cheese, hot dogs and stuff like that to what did you start? Like what, what was your kind of your the transition food or the food you started eating? So, mm -hmm. so one of the things was so I did start eating a lot more fruit. But mm -hmm. what I was working toward was to eat two meals a day. I mean, it, it didn't start off like this. This is one of the things where when you start talking about the transition, it's it's a little challenging because right. it does change over time. Right. When I first started, I was at school and they had these cafes in the cafeteria. So I, I literally went down there with a gym bag and mm -hmm. I, all, I just filled that bag up with apples, uh, oranges, 
they had things on display that you weren't supposed to take like broccoli mm. and, and cabbages <laughs> and whole things of romaine lettuce. And I literally would just go down there and put all that in my bag. And the one time somebody complained or, you know, one of the workers that was, tri- was like, ah, well, you're not supposed to take that. Uh, I literally had a meeting. I got, had a sit down with the head mm. of the cafe. I was like, look, this is how I eat. I don't eat that stuff. If you want to read this book, you can read it. But, mm. you know, but basically don't, don't get in my way. <laughs> and they were cool with it because yeah, I had a juicer upstairs. So I, this is oh, when wow. I yeah, started juicing. And I ultimately had developed this stockpile up in my room <laughs> and a whole side of where it was just like apples and oranges and stuff. You had and a whole so, garden. <laughs> yeah, it was all this stuff. And uh, so I just started, yeah, started juicing every day. Mm-hmm. I started eating the fruits and the vegetables, uh, uh, s- certain things like that, that we do that a lot of people don't know about or don't get into. There's this uh, recipe we like to call baked banana surprise. It's where you mm. bake bananas. It's like if you ever have a craving for pie or cake or some kind mm. of sweets, it's like baked banana, chopped dates, you put applesauce and you kind of put that, mix that together and eat that. And that's like, I've actually used that to help a lot of people that were really constipated that whose bowels weren't working very well. I'm like, okay, get on the baked mm-hmm. banana surprise and let talk to me in a couple of days. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then big vet vegetable meals would include things like baked squash, baked zucchini, always mm-hmm. have a, a big raw salad and then some kind of cooked mucus free vegetable. So there's certain vegetables where when you cook them, even if they start off starchy, you actually cook the starch out of them. So they become mucus free. So things mm. like uh, acorn squash and spaghetti squash and, uh, you know, zucchini are already mucus free before you cook them. Mm. But uh, things like that. Then I right. had what I call transitional mucuses or mucus forming foods that that I know are mucus forming, but they're way better than what I used to eat and what I mm. might have been craving. And so stuff like vegetable pasta and uh and things some some of those kind of things that i used right, for, right. for a period of time but i transitioned myself naturally off of those things i got to a point where i really just wanted the vegetables in the vegetable mm-hmm. meal the fruit and the vegetables and uh really didn't want the whatever processed transitional items that i was using but uh but yeah that's right. a right. a bit of a a bit of an introduction <laughs> to what that yeah. looked like yeah so a, a lot of people are eating a lot of different things and they don't even realize it's causing mucus to their bodies. Mm-hmm. What are some of the common foods that are mucus forming? Yeah, that's a good question. So the, the worst foods, we call them pus forming foods. When we say pus, we're talking about animal products. So all animal flesh, milk, all these things decay down into this very viscous form of mucus that we call pus. So that's that's the worst. That's what you want to try to get off of as soon as possible because that, that stuff is not really processed very well. And there's some people that, all these folks that want to do the carnivore and all this kind of stuff, acidifying their body. There's just the systemic acidosis and they think it's healthy because like, well, I'm skinny and I'm good, but they don't understand what they're doing to their, their colon and they're destroying their cells and their GI tract and things. So like meat and dairy, those are mucus forming. Yeah, m- yeah, meat and dairy, pus forming, then mm. uh, then grains and starches and even pl- and plant-based fats are mucus forming, but they can be used for transitional purposes. So that's mm. the, the art of the system, the art of the transition diet is learning how t- how to use particular mucus forming plant-based items to transition off of other things. The, some of the vegetables that I avoided that I don't use or didn't use on my transition would be like white potato. Now, I know some people love that or they swear by it and there's the starch solution and all those folks. For me, I didn't like the taste out. I much preferred sweet potatoes, which are way more mm-hmm. mucus free, less starchy. And uh, the white potatoes didn't eliminate well. So that's another... Mm-hmm principle for us. When I say the word elimination, that's kind of a catch-all phrase for digestion and bowel movements. And, you know, just when you eat Mm -hmm. something, 
the name of the game is it does it eliminate well for you and your body. So for me, white potatoes just did not do well. So that wasn't a tool that I used. There are certain things that I used a lot in the early years that I no longer use. Things like mm -hmm. uh, the cooked cabbage. I used to do a lot of cabbage and broccoli with salads. But over the years, that stopped eliminating as well. So it, things got a little more refined. When you see mm -hmm. anything processed, there's usually wheat, some kind of wheat flour, corn flour, or corn syrup or whatever, all that stuff. Uh, that's mm -hmm. all going to be mucus forming. And mm -hmm. uh, so fruits and green leafy vegetables in general are mucus free. Yeah. And I have a whole list that used to be number one when if mm -hmm. you would type in mucus forming foods, but they had the Google apocalypse several years ago where if you had, if you were anything had to do with natural health, they deprioritized mm -hmm. your page. Yeah. <laughs> It's also in in my uh, mucus. The ones that you want to get off of sooner than later. So that's all your your meat and dairy. Products, those do the most damage to the body. You know, some people get mad at me because I'll say, well, uh, avocados are mucus forming. I didn't mm -hmm. say you can't use them for a transition, mm -hmm. but it's not something that you would want to use for most people. I kind of actually tell them to do that test. It's like, okay, go a couple weeks without avocados on more of a mucus free kind of setup and see how much you have to wipe when you go to the bathroom and then go mm. have a couple of avocados and let's 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 test your wiping because it, it leaves mm. behind quite a bit of residue and uh and that's not what you want in your in your gut you really want things that burn away and eliminate as clean as possible right right you mentioned some of the signs that you might have too much mucus in your body you mentioned the the coughing, headaches, uh, elimination. Um, uh, but what, in terms of overall impact on health, like why is having too mu too much mucus in your body unhealthy for you? Or what what are some of the implications of having it? Yeah. So so one thing I'll, I'll make a distinction because this confuses a lot of people. Where there is a difference between the mucus that food can certain foods can turn into versus mm -hmm. the naturally occurring mucus mucus in your body. I think we should call it something else, oh. but from the lymphatic system. But what mm -hmm. happened, but there is a relationship because when you eat mucus forming foods that leave behind waste and slime in the body, that stuff builds up over time. Anything that's sitting in there that gets stagnant it starts to get old and toxic and nasty. Mm -hmm. And you, so you get these, this buildup of residues un, of uneliminated mat, fecal matter and, and decades old feces stones start to corrupt, creep up and parasites and worms and all this stuff is kind of in most people's guts and they don't know it. They just kind of, mm -hmm. so you can, depending on how far along you are with accumulating all this stuff, you can feel, you might not feel any symptoms yet, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden you start to feel various symptoms. And for different people, it could be all kinds of, cause it could be fatigue. Right. You start blowing your nose. Uh, cause what we're, what starts to happen is your lymphatic system, when it gets stagnant, when your body gets really acidic and your lymphatic system is no longer moving because there's actually more lymph fluid in your body than there is blood. But people don't talk about the lymph unless you you're in mm. our circles and you know about what's going on. So when people talk about uh, you know damage damaged cells, you know I know you you had mm. uh, some issues mm. along those mm. lines before your journey. Mm. Uh, where what what possibly could cause that? Is it could it be acids or alkaline or you know it's it's acids that's there's two mm -hmm. sides of chemistry the as, acids and alkaline side and when your body starts to get really acidic the uh, lymphatic fluid is acidic in nature and when it and when it comes to a standstill since there, there's no heart and lungs to pump that lymph fluid it has to mm -hmm. flow. And the cleaner you are and the less obstructed, the less acidic you are, your lymphatic system flows perfectly, filters all your waste, helps you filter your waste through your eliminatory organs, and, uh, and everything is good. But for most people, mm -hmm. they get constipated. So at the beginning of the Mucus's Diet book, Arnold Eretz says that 
every disease, no matter what name it is known by medical science, is constipation, a clogging mm. up of the entire pipe system of the human body. So we're not talking about just bowel constipation, but cellular constipation. So you start to get mm. backed up. Uh, another thing in the book they talk about that kind of demonstrates this, the tongue is the magic mirror. If you take a tongue scraper, most people, if you scrape your tongue and then just kind of let it sit there for a second, you'll start to see mucus uh, populate mm -hmm. on your tongue. Mm -hmm. And when you, what Eric points out is that your tongue and your whole, your whole GI tract, it's one long tube from your tongue all the way down to your anus. Mm. And so if your tongue is constipated, if there's, if it's all this mucus and all this gunk and stuff that's up here, imagine how constipated you are cellularly in the interstitial mm. fluids down in, in your colon and in your intestine and your stomach and your whole system is just backed up. And so mm -hmm. that's really the name of the game for us. We don't focus a, a, a lot on a lot of nutritional concepts. I know some people do. We look at things a little different where instead of trying to find, okay, what, what does my body need? It's like, what doesn't my body need? What, mm. can, I, what can I eliminate from my body that's unnecessary? Right. What kind of waste? What kind of what foods don't I need to eat? You know that. So mm -hmm. it's a little different mindset. And because so Eric says this, when you read the book, you'll notice this uh, vitality equals power minus obstruction equation. He says that's the formula of life. But basically mm -hmm. what that means is when the body becomes more too obstructed, when there's too much obstruction and stuff that's building up in the body, mm -hmm. you get to a point where the body is going to start to ultimately move to a standstill because mm. the body itself is an air gas engine. If you mm. look at the body as an air gas engine, now what does that mean? That means most people want to say, okay, they're, they're eating things to get fuel. They're mm. like, I got to get my fuel, but there's nothing you eat is going to help you if you are not breathing. Mm. Your breath is the absolute most important thing in your life. You can't go five or 10 minutes without air. Right. And as soon as your body on a cellular level starts to get too obstructed to the point where it can no longer cleanse itself, mm. that's when you start to have serious problems. And mm -hmm. uh, so really, so every time you breathe, you are cleansing your body, you're cleansing, you're helping to eliminate, uh, uh, matter and you know toxic waste and stuff out of your your bloodstream and your body and it mm -hmm. keeps everything moving so 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 that's kind of the perspective from Arnold Eret that he brought to the table mm -hmm. where it's like the body is an air gas engine when somebody doesn't make it when somebody passes away what happens there is too much obstruction there is too much mm -hmm. constipation in the body that's causing uh, stagnation. And then with the stagnation, here comes the acidosis. Here comes the body trying to, because it wants to try to keep the heart and the lungs as safe as it can. So if it can mm -hmm. create uh, some kind of cyst or some kind of, uh, you, you know, uh, growth or something, someplace mm -hmm. of toxic waste away from the lungs, you know, it's going to do that. But uh mm. But until we start to really clean the body out, and, right. I'll, and I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll warn everybody if you're squeamish, I'm going to show some, a picture here. Yeah. But this is what we're talking about. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the kind of slime and uh, uneliminated fecal matter, uneliminated slime. This is called mucoid plaque to uh, so mm -hmm. a lot of people. But this, this is the kind of stuff that's inside your body that is po constantly poisoning you. and uh, and this and these, this is the exact stuff I was getting out of me in those mm -hmm. uh, those early months when, right. when I was starting to go down this process. I was getting all of this slime <laughs> was coming out mm -hmm. of my body. And that's mm -hmm. when I kind of realized I just said to myself, no wonder I didn't feel good. Like, no wonder mm -hmm. my back hurt and my joint. I mean, I was 18 years old. I, I could barely even open this hand because. Wow. 
I, I played uh, football for six years and I, and this was basically almost arthritic. Uh, and, but with, again, within a year, this was fine. It's, 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 mm. it's been fine since then, but, but, but it all, all of those things, it's all obstruction because all I had mm. to do clean, clean my body out, yeah. clean myself, yeah. cellular level and that pain going away. My back pain went away. The, my knee mm. pain, I had a uh, knee, my right knee was all messed up that went away. And so wow. all these years, like, cause I've been doing this for 22 years mm -hmm. and all these years later, I'm stronger, have more energy and better cardio today than I did 22 years ago, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. getting better as I get yeah. older instead of getting worse. Right. Right. And you mentioned constipation. I remember reading this article that said that the average person in the U.S. has between five and 15 pounds of unprocessed uh, stuff in their colon. Is that true or is that? Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. Because in Arnold Eric, he says that in the Mucus of Diet book, he said uh, at, where he says like five to 10 pounds of uneliminated fecal matter is mm. in the average person. The thing is today, that's probably, and in a lot of people, that's more. And of course, and there's mm. case studies of people, I forget what they said, uh, uh, just there's a couple famous people that was at Elvis, I think he had. Oh yeah, yeah. 40 pounds of uneliminated right. fecal right. matter and stuff. But but that's way more normal than, they just don't talk about it because the medical folks don't, that's not what they want to talk about. But uh, yeah, that's, and so that's, that's literally poisoning the body when it's you know because I mean yeah it's, it's yeah 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 it's it, it, and so there's something that we do that some people it's kind I guess it's controversial to some people you know I just tell people do what you want to do I don't I don't care but <laughs> I'll tell you what what helped me was uh, lemon juice and distilled water enemas so mm -hmm. what that does is that's just that's helping helping along with all of this stuff that's so slimy, it's so sticky, uh, it's so acidic. And you take a little bit of lemon juice and water and just irrigate, you know, you irrigate mm -hmm. that colon. And, 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 and that's when you start to see stuff like stuff like this starts, mm -hmm. starts coming out of you. And you're like, man, I cannot believe that was in there. Uh, worms, mm -hmm. the tapeworms, all that stuff starts yeah. to come out. And, uh, but yeah, so that's how you deal. Because I've, worked with people where they would lose 20 pounds in the first week as they started doing enemas. And most of that was, was fecal matter weight. Mm. They was just walking around with, and you can see wow. people, I, I get sad if I go to the supermarket and I just see the level of suffering that is been normalized where there's so many people are just, they're walking around kind of hunched over I can tell they're constipated the way they're walking and it, you can just tell they're in a lot of pain, but it's been normalized. They're just because mm. they, they don't teach what we're talking about. So people don't know they should. This is should just be general knowledge. But since it's not, they throw pills at it and say, oh, here, here, take take a title. It's like, oh, the weather's changing. My back hurts. My my joints hurt. Take OK, then take a couple pills. And they've just mm. accepted it, that this is how it's supposed to be. And mm -hmm. when you're juicing every day, you know, you're eating mucus free. You, you, it's not. You don't have to accept that. You don't have to live right. like that. Right. Right. Hey, so, Professor, so you have a book. Tell us about your book. Yeah. So I got several. In fact, I'll grab. Grab these here. So the main one that I recommend everybody check out, this is the Mucus Diet Healing System Annotated, Revised and Edited by yours truly. So what this is, when I read the, you know, the original book, there's a whole history of different ver versions of the mucus diet book. But I looked out into the world and I saw all these different annotated versions of the most important books, like annotated Bibles and annotated, uh, you know, so Socrates and Plato and, you know, it's all that stuff. So I'm like, all right, mm -hmm. then I, we, we need an annotated version of the mucus diet because there's certain terms and things that a modern reader just wouldn't understand unless you explain it. So just mm -hmm. in the margins, I explain things in here, but this is yeah, very, very powerful book. Uh, it's mm -hmm. really, it, 
it, it's like it's the beginning of the change, total change of a paradigm. It's it offers a brand new way to look at the human body mm. and uh, and and how elimination works, how diet, nutrition, all that. It just gives a different take on those things. Then this book, my uh, spirit speaks. This is a, a companion book to the mucus's diet where I call this a lifestyle book because there's a lot of case studies in here of dialogues that I was having with people the uh, about where I was kind of you know, giving them little consultations or helping them along this mm-hmm. path. And uh, the kind of stuff we get into is you know, how to deal with social challenges. Cause that, that used to be one of the main reasons people fail on this path was because it was hard mm-hmm. for them to tell people, no, I'm not going to, I can't go to the bar with you or I don't want to go to this party or this restaurant because I'm trying to clean myself up and I might, I'm, I might not be strong enough to resist whatever's at this party. And so, you know, so those are the kind of discussions that are had in here. Then we have uh, rational fasting, mm-hmm. for physical, mental, spiritual rejuvenation, super important. Then these are the, these kind of small but potent, definite cure of chronic mm-hmm. constipation, thus speak at the stomach. And Mm -hmm. this is like the Spira's notes is like a Cliff's notes for the mucus of diet healing system. So it it outlines the entire book and there's uh, uh, glossaries and uh, comprehension questions and that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So those are the books. Man, you've been working. I didn't know you had all those books. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So if someone wants to find you or connect with you, how can they find you on social media? So I am at uh, so mucusfreelife.com is my main website. I'm gonna uh, I'll also I'll, I'll send you a a, a link link tree type of thing. Uh, it's I think dot live dot forward slash link tree. But uh, if you just find me on social media, I'm usually either prof dot spira or prof spira. So on Instagram, it's at prof dot spira. So P R O P R O F dot S P I R A. Then I'm on uh, Prospira on Facebook, and have a, a few different accounts uh, scattered mm-hmm. throughout. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely f- find me. <laughs> All right. And so finally, um, if someone is listening in and has been overweight, feeling unhealthy, maybe dealing with you know a couple of chronic illnesses. What advice would you give them to start? So I'd say definitely check check out the book, whether you get my version or you find some version, other version somewhere else, whatever. Just read this information, read the mucus's diet healing system information, and then start to act on it. Because the next thing is what are you going to buy at the store? For the people that are really ready to transform, I say go go into your kitchen and take a trash bag and just start just, just kind of throw it but if people aren't ready for that yet just improve what you're buying at the store the next time based on this new information that you've gathered mm-hmm. when you go to the store go straight to the produce section most every most of what you buy should uh, to eat should be in the produce section so you go mm-hmm. to the produce section start get what you need then uh then, then just start this process and mm-hmm. uh if you're brave to try a little colon irrigation, a little lemon juice and distilled water enema. You can uh, get, get baptized in that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but it's, it's really about cleansing and elimination. And, and once you start, it's, uh, it's like people say, you take one step toward the universe. The universe takes three steps towards you. It starts to get easier and easier to, mm-hmm. to practice this. And you, you start to figure it out. And once you start to feel some relief, you notice that, Man, I'm my headaches gone away, or you you might you might even go through a period where you release a lot of mucus at first because your body has been holding on to this stuff, and you go through a big elimination, and then you feel amazing because Mm -hmm. now you're because see most people when I started this I thought about this I because I had taken suppressants chronically for so much of my from age one to 18, I mm. took Sudafed and Dimatap and Robitussin and all this stuff, like all the time. My whole mucosa and mucous membrane system was just so 
uh, uh, compromised because these mm. suppressants just suppress the elimination of mucus. And mm. so as soon as I started practicing a diet and I got into a little bit of fasting and had been cleaning myself out and I noticed that I, I went through a, a pretty big mucus elimination and I thought to myself, Hey, uh, this, this actually, I'm actually eliminating this for good now because I'm not eating mm. the foods that put it back. And for that was for the first time in my life when I didn't, when I w was blowing my nose and coughing up phlegm and I didn't take a pill to stop it. So mm -hmm. my body was actually able to do what it is it's designed to designed do. To do right. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. I found over the years is that that is finite. It's mm -hmm. it, and it's not and it's it's controversial. But I mean, I've I've been around plenty of sick people and people are like, well, how how come you didn't get particular viruses or why didn't why aren't you sick because i i can't get sick that way that's not how it works for me you know it's like that you it's real immunity where you can really right. walk the world uh confident that when you go through a, an elimination your body is deciding that this is what's best to help you eliminate whatever it is that you've loosened up and accumulated but it's it doesn't have to do with whatever stuff that people are scared of uh, right. and so that was kind of a bonus for me <laughs> where I don't, right. I don't i don't have to live in fear walking around thinking oh i'm gonna catch something it's like catch no, something. right right i'm, I'm not yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so start making changes and pay attention to how you feel yeah oh yeah 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 all right all right well professor thank you so much for just sharing so much valuable information with us i know for some people this is going to be new information but it's so necessary and needed so thank you so much hey thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure yeah.